Okay. Hello, <laughs> we have this meeting started. Let's see, um, okay, one second. Now I'm going to uh, change who is Jared or uh, Moore, who's a panelist. Okay. Jared? Oops. Sorry. Jared, can you hear me? <clears throat> I can hear you. Here I am. Uh, Gosh, I'm sorry. I thought the secretary started this meeting and I was just- No, it's talking. all, it's, we're all, Ooh. we're all here. We're we late. We're all here. It was a fire. Hold on, let me pull up the agenda and then all we right. can call it to order here. Okay. Let me see if I can just take myself off the screen here. Okay, I think we are here. It is 10.07 a.m. Sorry for the late start for everybody who has been waiting. We're just sorting out the Zoom. Um, this meeting of the Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council Programs and Services Committee is called to order. Uh, I am Jared Gunsberg. I am the chair of the committee. Um, I'll now move to uh, the second item, which is to call the role of the committee members. Um, uh, Daisy Quinones, are you present? Oh, I think Daisy needs to be promoted to okay, panelist. Let me, let me promote. I, I'm, I'm going to um, promote all of the guests to panelists as well, right? So thank Dr. you, yes. Rebecca Sims. Um, who else? Uh, Esmeralda Ramirez or Harry? Any of those? We can, we can, I, if people want to chime in, we can promote everybody. There's, it's not a big group, so. I'm going to unmute them when they, I, 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 I've only ever started a meeting myself once before, so let me see if I can do it. Okay, so I will unmute them. And at, because this is a committee meeting, we could technically have all the attendees on video, but We'll just start with our. Um, we don't want to put them on the spot like that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Let's see. So we promoted uh, Dr. Rebecca Sims and Daisy to panelists. Let's see. And then Anna Lee, I guess everybody, if we can. Oh, Anna Lee, you're on the committee too? Yes. Okay, panelist. Is C.T. Williams on there on it? No. Okay. <clears throat> so nobody's popping up on the screen yet. Oh, a lot of talk. Okay. Um, Hi, are you able to hear me? Yes, yes Dr. Sims. Good morning. Thank Good you. Good morning. I can see only two of you. <laughs> Is this is Zoom, right? Yeah, it is Zoom. I, signed, I logged into Zoom. Yes. Thank you for having me here this morning. Thank you for joining Good morning. us. Hi. Good morning. I'm here. Thank you, Dr. Sims, for being here. I'm going to meet course. myself because I'm in a laundry room right now. <laughs> <laughs> nice reverb. It's, you know. <laughs> I'm enjoying your picture in the background there. <laughs> So, so um, I'm going to dip out or just stop my video, but so all the attendees, you can unmute and mute, right? Jared, do you have control over there, um, the panelists' um, ability? Yes, it, it, it seems that I do. Okay, cool. I'm just going to the show. Well, hold on. We have two. Oh. Hold on. I'm seeing, I'm only seeing, so the attendees can all, 
they've all been promoted to the only panelists I'm seeing right now are me and Fernanda. So I have um, I promoted Annalie, Dr. Rebecca Sims, and Daisy to panelists. So they're on my screen here. Uh, and the attendees, we have six attendees total. So there's two. Okay. So right. Okay. All right. Three understood. people that are not uh, panelists. Mm -hmm. Right. So I guess if anybody during public comment, they'll just have to raise their raise their hands. So yeah, and unmute. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay, so to the order of business of calling roll. Um, first, um, Ms. Annalie Har. Present. Thank you. Ms. Daisy Quinones. Good morning, present. And I do not believe Melanie is present today. So um, we have three of our four committee members. Um, that is a quorum and we can uh, proceed. Uh, okay, the next item here, hold on, let me pull up my, and for those joining, this is the second time I have run a uh, neighborhood council committee meeting, so if it's a little stilted, I'm still getting used to it. All right, the first um, item is public comment on any non-agenda items, so anything that is not on the agenda, if anybody, uh, any of the attendees uh, wishes to comment. This is the time you have two minutes per person to talk about any item that is not on the agenda. If you would like to comment, please raise your hand. I see no hands raised. So we are going to move on to the next item. Um, community and board announcements. Are there any announcements from the community? Anybody that wants to announce anything any events, any issues um, that, is, that is also not on the agenda. Okay, I see one hand here. I'm trying to unmute you. Hang on one moment here. I'll try to unmute him here. Allowed to talk. I'll let everybody allow to talk. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Everybody's allowed to talk. <laughs> so, C. T. Thank Williams. you. Okay. So yes, um, I see C. T. Williams. Hello. <clears throat> yes. Hello. Hello. Okay. I was actually wanting to do a public comment, but Please. you didn't seem to see my hand raised well we can we can this this is your two minutes we will go back to that item and, and you have two minutes to comment on okay it, it'll be less than that but anyway uh dr tom williams el sereno uh just wanted to announce that uh island park is starting an ad hoc committee on the northeast la community plan development However, uh, it will not, the plan from the Department of City Planning will actually not be started until probably the last quarter of this year. So maybe October, November, even December of this year. However, they're trying to get organized so that they can provide services and other programs within the community plan develop update context in order to help Northeast LA. That's all. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, moving on to, hold on, I gotta pull my screen up here. All right, moving on to the next agenda item, which is uh, the orders of business today for the Programs and Services Committee. Um, First, uh, do we have a representative from Big Brothers and Big Sisters present today to discuss um, available programs and possible um, ways to get the Lincoln Heights community involved? Yes, we have two. Okay, Myself terrific. Myself and Heriberto. Okay, and you both, I think, are available to talk. And I'm sorry, um, your name is this uh, Esmeralda? Esmeralda. Yes, okay, thank you. If you want to um, 
just tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do and, and the, the floor is yours. Okay, um, I am muted, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes, okay, perfect. Hi, yes, my name's Eddie Berto. I'm the senior enrolling and matching, matching specialist here at Big Brothers Big Sisters. Um, yeah, so today we're here to talk a little bit about our program and how it can be a service to the community. Um, so Big Brothers Big Sisters is a mentoring program that can pretty much be found in any city throughout uh, the United States. Um, what we focus on is empowering youth um, and creating and supporting this one-to-one -one mentoring relationship that can hopefully ignite the power and promise in the youth. Um, at Big Brothers Big Sisters of Greater Los Angeles, we serve over 1,500 youth um, and children between the ages of six and 17 um, through unique mentoring programs. So at Big Brothers Big Sisters of Los Angeles, we do offer a couple of different programs. Our largest program is the community-based program, which is the one we'll be mostly talking about today. Uh, but I do kind of want to share some other ways. We also um, you know, provide this mentorship to kids uh, throughout the community. Um, so aside from our community program, we also have our school-based program, um, which uh, is where mentors come to uh, a school and then pro they provide mentorship to kids um, during their lunchtime. Um, this one is more, it has like a curriculum they stick to, uh, to someone for the agency is always there to support them, um, you know, give them uh, things to talk about, um, little activities to do together, things like that. Um, another program we also offer is our uh, workplace program. And this is where a child is matched with a volunteer from our corporation. And then they, the child would go to the office uh, of that corporation. And then they would also receive mentoring, mentorship in that way, uh, you know, learn more about that business and stuff like that. Um, and that program, they see each other once a month. Um, and then in our school-based program, it's they, uh, the volunteers see the child once every week. Um, lastly, we have our women in entertainment program, and this is where a high school little sister, which is a, a girl, um, is met with women from the entertainment industry, and then they meet with them once a month also to provide mentorship. In that program, we're also focusing on prepping those uh, high school girls for college, so they receive SAT tutoring, um, they go on college, uh, college uh, tours, um, and uh, yeah, just getting them ready for the next stage in, in their career. Um, another program we offer, which isn't, you can't really sign up, it's more like if we give them an option once they graduate from our other programs, is our uh, college pack program. And this is where we just continue to offer, um, you know, resources and support uh, to our, uh, you know, kids who are, who decided to go to college. And then we just, you know, provide them resources in terms of just like scholarships, um, checking in on them on a monthly basis, see if they need any support or things like that, see if they're still in contact with their ment uh, mentor um, and overall just ensuring, you know, they, they continue to have that support um, through the next step in their life. Um, so yeah, so uh, as we continue today's conversation, it'll focus mostly on our community-based program um, and how it can be of service to the community. Okay, so uh, thank you. Um, the let's make sure I'm unmuted here. Mm -hmm. I am unmuted. All right, the the community based program. Could you just talk a little bit more about? I guess since that's the one that's most uh, yeah. uh, applicable here, could you talk a little bit more about the logistics and mechanics of how that's set up and how perhaps we here at the neighborhood council could help facilitate outreach? Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so a bit more about the community-based program. So our program is completely free to families. Um, we serve um, pretty much any child who wants to participate in our program. Basically, our only requirement is that the child is willing to participate. Um, and the reason for that being that we're such a social program where um, you know, we want to make sure that childs are attempting to build this relationship with their mentor. We don't want to be wasting anyone's time in a sense of you know, they go out and they're just being forced by their parents to do it. But really the only requirement we have is that the child uh, wants to participate. Um, so basically how our community-based program works is we match a child between the ages of six and 17 with a volunteer from the community. Um, and then basically the way they would provide mentorship to the child is they would go on outings twice a month. Um, and then those outings would depend on their interest on what they wanna do together. Um, so if, you know, maybe the child is someone who's uh, into sports, going to the park or going to a sporting event, 
or maybe the child is more into art, so going to a museum, taking art classes together, um, uh, or maybe they're you know, in high school and they're getting ready for college, so maybe taking them on college tours or um, you know, have, have helping them find resources in terms of you know, looking for uh, grants or um, scholarships they can apply, apply to. Uh, so it really depends uh, what the child uh, interests are, um, and that's how we kind of try to match them up with the uh, mentors. Um, the commitment to our program is for one year. So once the child is matched with the mentor, they're expected to be together for at least one year. Um, they're also expected to see each other twice a month, and each time they see each other should be between two to five hours. Um, the way we match is based on a couple of different things. So one of them being common interests, so kind of like I was talking about, uh, you know, sometimes the mentor is looking for someone that they can kind of guide through college, or maybe sometimes they want to just offer to support and giving the child an opportunity to do things they've never done before. Um, so a little bit about the kids, we, a majority of the kids we serve, half of the littles um, that we serve in our program um, come from single parent households. So a lot of them have parents, you know, who work two times, uh, two jobs, uh, they don't really have time to go on outings with them or to do activities. Uh, so this is kind of an escape for, for the kids to kind of do something outside from, you know, what they normally do at home. Um, a lot of our kids also receive, uh, around 90% of our kids receive a free or reduced uh, meals at school. Um, so a, a lot of the times our kids don't have the, those opportunities to do activities, um, you know, that others might have the chance to. Um, a lot of our littles, you know, we're so close to the beach, but they've never gone to it because, you know, their parents are busy working, you know, they never had the opportunity. Um, a lot of our kids have never been to a sporting event and, you know, LA is filled with them. So um, it's also a great way to give them an opportunity to do something they've never done before. Um, it also helps increase their social awareness. Um, you know, sometimes we set up goals that we want to achieve for our matches. Uh, so sometimes we might match a child who's kind of quiet, you know, reserved through in their shell and then, uh, you know, through the power of mentorship um, and getting them out there doing new activities um, they're able to break out of that shell and, get, and gain more confidence. Um, just some quick little uh, information about our littles is 94% of them have uh, see an improvement in their self-confidence. 92% um, of our littles also um, uh, improve their academics as well. And then 97% of kids in our program go on to graduate from high school. Um, so through that, you can kind of see how our program can benefit kids who are looking to become uh, more independent, more self-aware, um, gain that confidence to you know, continue to pursue what they want. Um, and the way you, know, you can help us is getting the word out, not just for you know, kids who want to participate in the program, but also for volunteers. That's something that we really want to do is reach out to more people in the community who can offer support to uh, you know, kids in their community. Um, we serve all of greater Los Angeles or LA County, basically. So from Lancaster, all the way to Long Beach, Santa Monica, all the way east to uh, Pomona. Um, so we serve a great area and we could really benefit from getting uh, the word out there about our program, reaching out to more mentors who are looking to give back to the community. Um, we get a lot of, uh, majority of our volunteers come from the West side. So, you know, Santa Monica, uh, Mid City, uh, that whole, um, you know, east, uh, west side area. Um, and a lot, a lot of our littles are not found in those areas, right? Um, a lot of our littles come from, uh, you know, the South Central or the East, east LA. Um, and that's where we want to do more outreach when it comes to volunteers. We want to know, you know, hey, we have these kids who, from your community, who are looking for someone that they can look up to, someone who can pro provide them guidance, someone who can take them to do fun activities, someone who can give them like a safe space to talk about what's going on at home. Because uh, we know as kids, we didn't want to talk to our parents about everything. You know, sometimes we would want to talk about someone else about what's going on at home or at school. And providing them this safe space can really help, uh, you know, push that effort of helping them build that self-confidence, um, getting more comfortable and being more social, um, getting more comfortable pursuing what they want. Um, so in, in, in that sense, it's what we're looking for is just to, you know, help us get the word out about our program, um, doing a bit more, sharing some of the uh, you know, benefits of our program to the families as well, because we are, we're a program that believes every child deserves to have a mentor, not just a certain uh, you know, demographic or anything like that. We feel like anyone can benefit from having a mentor. Um, and then 
also before I go, I did kind of want to quickly talk about, you know, some of the mentors we do have in our program, because it is uh, something that's super important to, to us is safety. Um, so a bit about the mentors in our program, they're people from your know, community who want to give back. They do go through a very thorough process because we understand how important safety is to our parents. Um, so they go through an orientation where we share about the program, um, expectations, goals, um, and we also interview them to make sure they have the time to commit to our program. Um, we also want to make sure they, ha they have the right reasons to want to participate in our program. We then, uh, you know, do a very thorough background check. We look at finger, we take their fingerprints. We uh, look at their local and federal records. Um, we also do, re uh, sorry, references. Uh, so they go through a very thorough background check that usually takes about a month because we want to make sure we're getting the best uh, mentors for our program. Mentors who are doing it for the right reasons. Uh, mentors in our program don't get any type of, you know, compensation for volunteering. They don't get paid or anything like that. Um, they just want to do it because they want to be part of the community and want to give back. Um, and that's what we want to continue to do and, you know, building these new partnerships um, so we can do more outreach, you know, help out more littles. Um, Los Angeles, LA County is a large place and, you know, there's always going to be kids needing mentors. Um, and if we can, you know, work together to get uh, the word out about our program, we can definitely, uh, you know, help as many kids as we can. And then hopefully um, at that point, it, it'll be more word of mouth, right? The more people who know about the program, the more people who can share about it um, and hopefully get more people into it. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much our program. I'm not sure if you guys have any other questions. Um, I guess the first question I have is just in how we can, how if the, if the neighborhood council, just so a little, you might be familiar with this, but how this works is this is a committee of the larger neighborhood council. This is the programs and services committee. So. Mm -hmm. What we have to we we decide, and then if the neighborhood council agrees to it, we have to take everything we decide, and then we decide if we're going to take it to the board. The board has to vote on it. So we'll have to present something to the board about how to, um, you know, whether or not everybody agrees that the that the Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council should uh, endorse outreach. So yeah, yeah. what mechan you know, just, again, logistically. Uh, are there materials and things like that that you could provide as far as something as as basic as flyers or you know notices that we could that we could put up um, around the neighborhood? Have materials for people to get more information. Obviously, we would if if it's approved by the board, we would ask this yeah. go up on the website. But we can get those materials from you. I'm sure you have things like that. Yeah, yeah, we have uh, flyers. We can definitely share if you know we're approved. Um, as far as that, we can also do little info sessions in case people want to learn more about the program as well. Because uh, I know sometimes the flyers don't share too much information about, you know, what to really expect from the program. So we can always host little info se sessions as well for people in the community. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I, I think that the, the, um, any of the, are there any other uh, comments or questions at this point from any, any of the committee members? Annalie or Daisy. Annalie, you can, I think you can unmute yourself. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, uh, I uh, had a family member who was uh, part of uh, the uh, big brothers and big sisters. And it was like the best experience. Her big sister, you know, her parents were not uh, the best and, uh, and uh, she got involved. I think when she was like six or seven and like, her big sister became like her family at her graduation and, really good. I mean, that's the only experience that I've had with it, but so I think it's a good uh, group. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, any other questions from... I want to chime in too. I apologize. Please. No, no, Daisy, jump in. Yeah. Uh, so um, I think that um, this program will be beneficial to Lincoln Heights if uh, there are family that if there are families out there that are not aware of this program, um, I have three kids and they all three have uh, participated. And um, it's on point on what um, Heriberto was sharing, what they do. Uh, my oldest one graduated from high school when he was struggling. Um, he's on to college now, community college, of course, but he keeps in touch with uh, both his mentors that he had um, the youngest one, my daughter too, she's also had, uh, 
mentors, um, two of them. And, uh, you know, the reason for termination has been because they've moved or because they've had job offers, um, but they've done activities as far as like going to movies, going to museums, going to outings, even the big brothers and big sisters, they conduct events where bigs and littles, they're called big and littles, um, the big brother and big sister and or little brother, um, the littles, they go and they do hands-on activities um, or extracurricular, whichever, but um, the youngest one has benefited from having um, online game sessions with his mentor because of the pandemic. And uh, they've also gone to like, they go out and eat, they've gone to the movies, they go to sports events. Um, I have even had the ability to get tickets and take them myself to sports events. And um, I think it benefits the, the kids. My, my, I think my kids have been impacted very well, pretty much on point on what Eddie Berto was talking about that what they do. Okay, well, I think um, my other question for the committee members um, is how do we think the neighborhood council could help facilitate um, outreach, which is really the big thing, both for, for youth who want to participate and for adult volunteers. I mean, off the top of my head, obviously, flyering at all the usual places in the neighborhood, um, website presence. Um, but I, I'm curious uh, if, if Daisy or Annalie, you have any ideas, and if our friends from Big Brothers Big Sisters have any ideas, too, for community outreach. I'd like to hear those. Um, I, yes, this is Eddie Bertel speaking again. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so um, I think any, if you guys host like any events, um, giving us an opportunity to maybe set up like a table where we can, uh, you know, give out those flyers, but also give uh, the families or the volunteers an opportunity to ask us questions. Um, I think that'd be really helpful. Um, I think on that, uh, also if maybe you're hosting like any virtual meetings or stuff like that, where we can share about our programs to, you know, uh, when you have people from the neighborhood uh, participate in them, things like that, I think can also be helpful um, in getting that outreach, um, whether it's to get those people or, you know, just making them aware of it so they can share with, you know, their families or friends about the program. Okay, would you be uh, willing to, are you available um, for the next board meeting? Because we could have you um, basically give your same presentation and, and, and answer questions at the next larger board meeting. Um, we could put that on the, ask to put that on the agenda. That is the 17th. Um, what time do our board meetings usually start? I don't, I, um, I, don't know, I think second. it's the 19th on Thursday. Oh, right? the 19th Thursday. Thursday. I'm looking at my calendar right now. At six, we start at six p.m. Starts at six. Yes. So, would you be available on Thursday the nineteenth? We would. The, the meetings can. We would. We would lobby hard to get you on early, so you don't have to stay yeah. too long. Yeah, I think so. Um, uh, we have a, a big team here, so I'm sure someone can attend. Somebody from. Okay, from, that's yeah, great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and um, Daisy, would you be willing to kind of coordinate getting uh? a rep there for the next uh, board meeting if we put it on agenda? Sure. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Um, okay, so yeah, that would be, I think that's the next step. I mean, I think at this point, um, I'd like to put a motion before the committee for the committee members um, to uh, motion to recommend uh, Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council um, involvement in outreach and facilitating uh, the, the Big Brothers Big Sisters program. So um, I'm, I'm, do I have a second on that motion? I get that. All right, motion seconded. And now per the rules, we already did discuss it, but uh, time for any public comment on this motion. Seeing no hands, any board comment on this motion? Again, with the idea that we, we just did discuss it, but procedurally that is the rules. Okay, seeing no hands. All right, I will now put this to a vote. The vote is to recommend for the Programs and Services Committee to represent to recommend to the board that the Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council Board um, endorse and assist in facilitating outreach for the Big Brothers and Big Sisters program. If you are in favor, please vote 
Aye. Um, first, I will go to Anna Lee. Aye. And I will go to Daisy. Aye. And I will vote aye as well. So the motion carries with a unanimous vote. So we will recommend to the committee, I mean, to the uh, larger, the entire Neighborhood Council board that the Neighborhood Council um, endorse Big Brothers and Big Sisters and facilitate with outreach. And we'll ask that a, um, before it goes to the vote of the full board, we'll ask that a representative from Big Brothers and Big Sisters uh, present at the next board meeting, which uh, Daisy has graciously uh, agreed to help facilitate. So thank you very much for your time today. I appreciate it. And we'll see you or somebody um, at the meeting on the 19th. Thank you. Thank you so much. You guys have a good weekend. Thank you. You too. Okay, the next item is, hold on. Um, the next is uh, Dr. Sims. I believe you are here to present options for community parenting classes. Hi, good morning. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can. Thank okay. you again for being here. Absolutely. Um, so I am Dr. Sims and I uh, run a nonprofit organization called Becky Angels International. And our primary mission is to reunify families who have um, had trouble with um, the court, meaning that there is domestic violence or child abuse, neglect, et cetera. And DCFS has come in and removed the children and now court um, is mandating that the clients um, uh, seek parenting services, domestic violence services, anger management, et cetera. And so I'm here to just talk about the parenting piece. The parenting piece is a program that is court approved. It's, uh, it's called Breakthrough Parenting. That's the curriculum that I use. And I'm, the sorry, court, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually taking notes. Well, uh, the name of the program was? It's Breakthrough Parenting. Okay. Yes. Um, and so the curriculum is, has been court approved. So we provide it. Uh, we provide groups. I used to have an office um, in LA, but after, during the pandemic, I had to close it down. And what has worked better in provide, delivering the, uh, the lectures is via Zoom. And I, it's just worked wonderful because I'm able to provide more services um, with less cost. So over the years, I actually have put out of pocket um, all the money because I am a very, Daisy actually can tell you how busy I am. Um, uh, my full-time job, let me, let me backtrack a little bit. My full-time job, job is I'm actually an educator. I am a college counselor and a professor. So that's my full-time. I run this on the side just to provide services, affordable services to our community. Um, and so our primary referral um, system is from DCFS and the courts. Uh, and so we provide, again, the um, certified parenting so that families are able to meet the requirement for the court and transition into getting their children back. Now, what is unique for us is that I combine mental health um, with, um, with that formal education. So what I do with the clients um, is have them commit to some type of goal, um, educational goal, so that they can either get a degree or go into a trade for sustainability purposes. So that's what's unique about us. Um, and part of that is because I have a lot of resources. I was actually listening to, is it Alberto from the program? I would love to connect with him because I feel like we can do some work between the colleges and, and his program. Um, but anyway, so getting back on track, uh, once, uh, once the clients seek their degree, then I have a program that actually helps them with employment so that they're able to have a career and not just a job. Um, and able to help and provide services, um, as well as educate the parents on how to provide a healthier environment for their children. So, I mean, that's pretty, pretty much the, the meat of it. In terms of the process, it would be just based on referral. And um, in terms of the cost, which is what families 
have trouble with is a, the entire program from beginning to end is $200. They can pay um, via payment um, as much as they can every week until they pay it all. Um, and that's just to help with some of the costs because most of it comes from out of pocket from me, which is really difficult because I have two, two teenagers that are actually going away to college and um, I am, you know, I'm by myself having to fund these two, these two girls. So um, it's getting tougher for me to, to, you know, pull out of pocket, but basically, um, Daisy, is it okay if I share that you were part of it? I mean, I don't know if you want to comment. Uh, yes, go ahead. Yeah, so Daisy um, invited me because she was one of my clients in the program. And um, I'm so proud of her. She went and finished her, her bachelor's degree. And I'm in the process of pressuring her to go get her master's degree. Um, at no cost, by the way. So she's very, very intelligent and I know she can do it. So this is kind of the work that I do is empower, um, empower the community. I don't care who it is to, um, to reach their full potential, basically. Um, I don't know, Daisy, do you want to comment on your experience? You know, what was helpful? What made it unique maybe from other programs? Uh, sure. Oh my God, Professor. Um, so okay, cute. so I think that, um, <laughs> I know, I, I think that was what was good about it is that you really, Dr. Sims really gets into where our issues as humans, where it stems from. And um, I've had other parenting classes where uh, the instructor, or the coordinator um, addresses what is healthy, what is not healthy, how to uh, how to just be consistent in parenting, which are, which are are true. They, that is true. I agree. In my opinion, this is all my opinion, of course. Um, but what I learned from Dr. Sims is that a lot of our our methods derive from our belief system and it's basically how we are raised how we're programmed and it's not ill-intended but sometimes the results of that uh become you know can uh not be good and so anyways um it's been a good experience and i think that she has a lot to offer i don't know what else to say um yeah, no, um, thank you, Daisy. I really appreciate your kind words. For me, I've also it's... seen her. Actually, I apologize. Let me finish really quick. <laughs> I've also <laughs> seen her because when I was taking her uh, classes, I was also going to school and I was able to transfer. And she does give encouragement. And I've seen her hands on with, um, I'm going to say, less fortunate families. Um, she's good at reaching out and communicating. I've seen that hands hands on um so anyways um i'm gonna vouch that what she's saying she's really much i don't know i wouldn't have invited her if i didn't believe that she was capable of bringing something to the lincoln heights community yeah i do a lot of under the i do a lot of background work i'm 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 a very um left brain person i don't like to be on stage and i don't you know like that kind of stuff I'm more like give me the clients and I will do miracles with them you know um so and I have a true love for the community I I actually raised myself at the age of 12 my mother left me and I had to escape DCFS and had to work seven uh days a week two jobs go to school hide from the system and along the way she left me with a four-month-old little brother that I had to raise so I suffered a lot of starvation and um, I didn't have any of the services that are out there that I found out about. And so that's what I'm good at um, is getting these, um, these clients or these humans and finding individual needs and finding the right services and the right pathway, which is the unique part is 
each person is different. They have different talents, different temperaments, different abilities, and what is the best match for them rather than one size fits all. Um, so that's kind of where, and I pick up the, you know, that most of the clients, it's not just parenting, it's a holistic approach because when they come to parenting, I also find that there are other underlying issues like what's underneath the sea in an iceberg, right? What we don't see, what we see is the, the over the ocean, right? Is the behavior. So where did it come from? And so sort of going into the in-depth and finding out the root of the problem and addressing it. So um, yeah, um, and the only the only issue is there's just one of me and <laughs> it gets pretty busy, but you know, I, whether I, I go to the board meeting or not, that's, that's not a, a, um, my primary goal here. My primary goal is for you guys to use me in whatever capacity to help your community. Um, I was, one of the things that I did do a lot is work with LAPD. Um, and it's so, um, it's, I created the classes at the police station where you would think like a lot of these clients are afraid to enter the police station because sometimes, unfortunately, they get victimized by the police, you know, re-victimized. So um, that made it a very safe place for them. They got to communicate with the law enforcement officers and um, it was a really good um, match there. We bridged a lot of uh, communication between law enforcement and, and the client. So you guys have the Hollenbeck area, right? Yes, I have. I have some questions and some things that jump out to me. Um, first, one, I, I, your story is is commendable, and thank you for providing the service and doing so much um, out of pocket for the for the community for families who really need it. Um, it's I outside of you know by volunteering here with the council. I, I work as an attorney, and I do a, a tremendous amount of work. In the youth justice system, so I'm I'm very familiar with the process and the parenting classes because often parenting classes are ordered, um, not on the dependency side but on the youth justice side or what they used to call the delinquency court as well. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm very familiar with it. So my concern as not I'm not speaking as a as a lawyer here. I'm speaking as a, a as a member of the neighborhood council board and the chair of this committee. Um, you know the overlap of parents in the community who may be court ordered, the neighborhood council cannot, uh, is not in a position to endorse any one provider. And that's nothing personal. To oh yeah, you oh, yeah at I all. Get it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's nothing personal to you at all. The, the, we, we can't get involved for all the ethical liability scope mm -hmm. of the, the scope of the services of what the council is to provide we you know for all those reasons we can't we can't endorse any one provider or get involved in any any community members uh particular court proceeding in, in any way um so i would the other question i have is um so we'd have to formulate you know if, if we were to go forward with the board endorsing i would i would suggest that we would need to formulate uh, something that is distinctly separate and apart from the court. Um, the other is, you know, providing, I, I, I think at some point, and again, I know you're here, you know, volunteering, um, but we would need to discuss further how this, what, what the exact curriculum looks. My concern is, is when, when, and perhaps this is a question you can address. So I, I'm thinking as I'm talking. So um, apologies if this is a little stilted. The issue um, in presentation is that often these parenting classes are perceived, um, the court order parenting classes are perceived as, as remedial or punitive, you know, that it's some sort of, of punishment. And the approach just by the nature of the curriculum can be seen by the participants is something that, you know, they're doing something wrong or they're doing something that they need redirection on, that they're, you know, they're being, I would say not volunteer, voluntold to do this. Um, so the question is, is, is there something that you would be comfortable providing that's a little bit more, um, you know, something for new parents, more about, um, okay, I, you know, 
you know, I remember when we had our, my wife and I had our kid, we went to, we went to a hospital program. I mean, I'm talking the basics of like, mm-hmm. how do you, <laughs> how do you change a diaper? What's infant CPR look like? Things that I, you know, didn't know anything about. So I know that's for, you know, newborns and infants. Is there, is there also something you can provide on an individual basis that ranges from that sort of basic entry level care to um, parents that are just having some issues and might have questions or need some guidance or just some ideas about how to, you know, structure things in the house a little differently, you know, with just sort of uh, more everyday problems rather than these big issues that are often presented in court ordered programs. Yeah, like some more self enrichment or development. Yes, right? that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. Right self-enrichment or development which is is also what I do I mean I take this and I do that in um other countries um I'm actually getting ready to go to Mexico and uh, the parents there have requested educational resources on how to provide you know more deliver better parenting to their children so I can totally get yeah I can get that um yeah, there's different, I mean, there's different approaches. I don't have anything written per se. Um, but again, you know, like me being here is not so much because I, I have enough clients that come through. Right. No, I, I appreciate that. Because of because of the um, referral system and their experience, you, DCFS workers uh, absolutely love our program. Uh, right now I have a lot of clients. Um, it's more about how can how can the community use me? And, and it doesn't have to be in parenting. It could be in, in education. Um, you know, I would love, one of the things that I wanted to do in Lincoln Heights uh, is to provide educational, um, educational workshops for the parents um, on how to help their children um, go to college for free. What are, what's out there? Right now, um, I work at three different colleges. Um, Pierce just hired me to work with the athletes, getting them scholarships, uh, full rides to um, to college, and it's out there, you know, um, up to their master's degree, medical school, law school. It could all be paid for. Well, you as a lawyer, you know how expensive, and me as a doctor, <laughs> expensive education is. Well. Oh, yeah. There's a federal program that will pay uh, 100% of it. Um, I wish I would have known about it before I got my degree, but um, it's out there. So I have all of that um, put together as a package. And I would love to educate parents, especially Spanish speakers, uh, minority parents that have zero knowledge about college. Um, so if you can use me in that capacity, I'm happy to do that too. You know, I, I mean, I'll leave it up to you. I'm here, use me. That's basically what I'm saying. Okay, no, that's great. That's great. Um, I think at this time, I, I think, you know, is, I, I know from my end and, and if Annalie or Daisy, well, Annalie or Daisy, do you have any other questions or anything that you'd like to ask? All right, nothing at this time. All right, I think it, Dr. Sims, I appreciate the time. I'm not sure what the recommendation would be. I need to, I know from my end, I don't have a motion at this time, just like you said, this, that you're here and you're available. Um, I think at some point, what one of the things I was going to suggest when we get to the, oh, Annalie, I see your hand. Oh, yeah. No, I was just going to say, I think like all, all of the different things that you're offering are awesome. And yeah, maybe just, to take a little time to be able to marinate, to be like, okay, yeah, right? I mean, I don't know, yeah, like, is there a motion or do we kind of figure out, hey, start brainstorming on on things, you know, that we could use you for, right? Yeah, and it doesn't have to be at this meeting, right? You guys can, can think about it and maybe in a future meeting, I'm okay with that too. Okay, that's great. Awesome, thank you. All mm-hmm. right, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Absolutely. It was nice meeting you guys. Nice meeting you. Have a great Good day. Good work. Good work. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And thanks for your service. Absolutely. Okay. Moving on to the next, um, the next item here. Um, this is something on the agenda. Um, the um, 
this is just a discussion. I don't really have a, 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 a thought on this. I, this was something that I wanted to start the conversation on, um, which was a discussion of uh, the public safety issues facing the community and strategies to keep community updated on these issues. This is obviously the most, one of the most sensitive um, discussions in the, com in the community because it involves how the community interacts with law enforcement, um, which is complex and requires a lot of uh, careful, thoughtful discussion. So I'm, I'm tiptoeing into these waters. And part of it is that it is undeniable um, that the homicide rate over the past year in the Lincoln Heights community is, is high. And there, there are reports regularly of um, homicides in the neighborhood um, that is the community doesn't, as far as I can tell, we're, we're not apprised on the status of what's going on um, as far as the investigations, whether arrests have been made, um, what, what we think is going on behind this. And now everyone has different views uh, of how the neighborhood council, the board, the community in general should be interacting with the police. I think, I hope we can all agree um, that to the degree that law enforcement can disclose that we have some conduit of information um, from LAPD to know what the status of it, what the status is with with the homicide rate in the community and with um, public safety issues in general. So I just wanted to open that up to the other committee members. If if you want to comment or have thoughts, um, this is really just the beginning of a conversation. If you agree with me, disagree with me. Okay, I'm not seeing any thoughts or hands right now. So I can table this to a future meeting, perhaps with some um, ideas, and maybe this goes back to um, another item we tabled at the last meeting, which was how to um, best, uh, you know, having sort of citizen experts community members, stakeholder experts in various uh, areas uh, facing the community. Um, and maybe somebody can take up public safety. So since there's no further comment at this time, I will uh, table that for now. Oh, Daisy, there you are. I, I actually, I think that we should table it so that we can uh, simmer on what you just touched on. Um, because what's coming to mind right now for me, it's like, I think this just goes to show the lack of communication uh, between the community and the department. Um, I don't know. I can't think of of um, anything else. And and uh, I mean, I'm not a big fan of the police. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, right. I mean, <laughs> that's that's the complex. That's and I I understand the complexity here. You know and. Um, but at the same time, it feels like there's so little communication that there at least has to be, you know, is it is it time to at least try to figure out some way um, for the for the neighborhood council or the community? And maybe maybe the answer is that the rift is there's there's too much of a rift. I don't know. That's why. But this is exploring it. But yeah, I agree. We should we should, you know, marinate on this. If not when, though, like if not now, when? Right. The rift will continue, and we're just enabling. Um, well, this is just my opinion. My yeah. opinion is that they are in a position of authority. They are the role model, so they set the tone. So it starts with them as a department, right? Because truly, they are authority, leadership, and so forth. And so, when they want to. <sighs> work for a neighborhood and literally protect and serve which doesn't happen um it's like what tone are they setting when their uh actions are not meeting their their words are not meeting their actions and vice versa 
they can say that they this is what they want for a community, but their demonstration and their action is how are they treating the community? You know, and, and then is that opening the door so that one can go over to their department and inquire or even provide feedback? So um, as far as us, I think for me, my question would be more like, how can we get that rope and toss it over so that they can grab it and pull us in kind of a thing? That's my, my the way that I, that's what I can say. I think that's a I think that's a really really eloquent way to put it and and clear and I think I I agree maybe this is something we should all marinate on but it's something that I that I hope we can come can come back to hopefully if this committee grows a little a little or we can do more outreach um, to have these conversations um, so I can I can you know and again my my thought is really about just getting information it just feels that we're not even getting any information um, from from Hollenbeck um, about the status through the neighborhood council, and I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not privy to the history with the council and in Hollenbeck. Um, you know, it's something perhaps we, we could look into as well, and just see if there's some way to um, open up communication. But I agree, we should marinate on it, and and I agree with I agree with your sentiments, Daisy. Absolutely. So thank you. Um, all right, moving on. The um, ah, the website. The further discussion and possible action on the redesign and consolidation of the Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council website. All right, so um, this is the next thing. So I would um, say that um, I've given this some thought. Um, I think we have to table this for now because my hope was that at the at a board meeting, uh, we were going to be able to make a pitch to the whole board for everyone to sort of everyone come up with ideas and possibly present them, you know, come to the next committee meeting and, and present them because I really want to do I really think it's beneficial for all of us to hear feedback from the whole board about how they you know any ideas they have and and how we could put this together and so i wanted to invite board members um at a board meeting to come to the next pns committee meeting so i i would table this for now only so that we can uh announce this at the next meeting so i'll table that for now um as for future items okay there was a few things melanie had discussed um, the animal uh, care and adoption um, idea. Um, but I, um, she's not here today, so but we can we, we can put that on the uh, on the agenda for the next time Melanie's going to be here. I think it's a terrific idea. And I, I actually neglected to put it on the agenda today. That Daisy reminded me that that was something that was on there. So um, that will get on there for next time. Also, the ongoing crucial discussion of can we rename this committee? Um, so I, I don't have any ideas on that yet, but I will give it some thought for some further, uh, for a future item, possibly for the next meeting. So um, there is nothing else at this time. Um, and just to recap, um, Daisy will coordinate um, a rep from Big Brother Big Sisters to present at the next board meeting. Um, and with that, at 11.04 um, a.m., I uh, move to adjourn this meeting. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Motion carries. Meeting is adjourned at 11.04 a.m. Thank you all. Thank you, Jarrell. Thank you, Emily. Thank bye. You. Thank you, guys. Bye. bye. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>